Hello students, welcome to the lipid chemistry part 1 where we will be discussing the general uh, classification of lipids as well as detailed classification of fatty acids. Now uh, lipids as we know uh, they form a heterogeneous group of compounds uh, which comprises fats, oils, steroids, waxes and other related uh, such compounds which are related more on the basis of physical characteristics. Uh, than on, uh, on the similarity of uh, chemistry or chemical characteristics. And uh, the most important common property of uh, lipids is that they are relatively insoluble in water but freely soluble in organic solvents like either chloroformistic acid or benzene. So that forms the most important common property. Now, uh, the, they, they are structurally, they are not similar. So this is unlike carbohydrates for example, they have got a general formula or a protein or uh, you take the case of nucleic acid, they have a common design. So unlike those uh, molecules, lipids are not having a common design. Now, first of all, uh, before we go to see the classification, first of all, we can see the functions of uh, lipids. Now, first of all, this is uh, high energy, uh, lipids form the high energy value storage form of energy, which means that the fat is the most energy dense of the, uh, of the common energy yielding nutrients. Uh, fat actually provides 9 kilo calories per gram which is more more than twice the energy store of or energy is provided by uh, molecules like carbohydrates or proteins. Fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E and K uh, because they are soluble in organic solvents and are absorbed uh, and transported in a manner similar to that of fats. Uh, so they have been included or categorized under lipid derived substances here. So it forms a function, one of the functions of lipids and we know uh, fat soluble vitamins, uh, what, uh, what function or what significance these fat soluble vitamins have in our body. Now steroid hormones again, uh, like uh, fat, soluble vit fat soluble vitamins, these hormones, for example, six hormones or hormones like cortisol, they are lipid derivatives uh, and they, they uh, actually are formed from cholesterol. Now cholesterol is being precursor of most of them. Now, um, lipids form structural components of biomembranes, especially phospholipids, fatty, acid, fatty acids, acylglycerols, cholesterol, uh, they all form uh, the part of uh, plasma membrane uh, as well as the membrane of uh, cell organelles. Then uh, adipose tissue, adipose tissue, uh, it forms an uh, insulation against external uh, um, uh, uh, changes in external temperature. And adipose tissue is commonly known as body fat. Uh, it is found all over the body. It can be found under the skin as uh, subcutaneous fat. It is packed around internal organs as um, uh, we call visceral fat. Uh, it is packed uh, between muscles, with uh, within the bone marrow and also in breast tissue. Uh, adipose sites uh, basically store energy in the form of fat or triglyceride which can be mobilized as free fatty acid during uh, long-term fasting. Uh, long-term energy needs are met with uh, those adipose tissue stored fats. Uh, then comes, um, no, um, adipose tissue has the function of uh, protecting internal organs also as well as giving shape uh, or contour to the body. The body shape uh, will be, uh, we know, uh, we, we will lose the body shape or the attraction attractive figure um, with the uh, loss of uh, uh, loss of fat or adipose tissue especially on the face uh, or on other parts of our body now electrical insulators and myelinated neurons is one of the key functions of uh, lipids myelin sheath uh, is uh, made of uh, lipids and proteins and um, it forms the protective sleeve that covers or wraps around the axon of uh, neurons uh, the, the primary lipid of myelin is uh, 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 lipid of myelin sheath is a glycolipid called cerebroside and also sphingomyelins like ceramide so cerebroside or ceramide all these things we will deal later uh, they all adds the adds the strength of, of uh, myelin sheath so basically it strengthen the myelin sheath and myelin has a, a property of a high electrical resistance which means it can act as an insulator, electrical insulator. Therefore, myelin sheath insulate axons to increase the speed of electrical signal conduction. 
uh, and this allows myelinated axons to conduct electrical signals at very high speeds which is uh, crucial important as far as um, uh, nerve impulse uh, is con concerned or transmission of nerve impulse is concerned metabolic regulators in various ways like steroids acetyl coenzyme prostaglandins and all these are uh, derived lipids uh, especially you know, acet acetyl coenzyme is actually derived from um, um, breakdown of fatty acids as well as steroids prostaglandins all these have uh, uh, definite functions at uh, definite metabolic roles they have got um, uh, and uh, some of which we will see uh, as we proceed to see the metabolism of fats later and as surfactants role of uh, lipids as surfactants and emulsifying agents the biological surfactants are usually composed mostly of lipids almost 90 percentage uh, of uh, so biological surfactants are lipids and the rest is mostly proteins uh, phospholipids are the major lipid component of a surfactant like for example dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine dppc uh, and uh, and one of its key role is to uh, it, it decreases the surface tension in alveoli making it easier for alveoli to increase surface area for gaseous exchange and we know that alveoli what the role of uh, alveoli is it's all with, uh, it's all concerned with uh, gaseous exchange so this is very important mm, the, the the surfactant role of uh, dpcc D, dppc um, um, more correctly dipalmitoyl phosphatidyl choline so it is very important in alveoli another example is bile salt derived from cholesterol cholesterol breakdown uh, it's an ideal example uh, um, especially during the digestion of fats the role of bile salts comes there and other examples include uh, emulsifiers include lecithin ester of monoglycerides uh, which all act uh, are acting for reducing surface tension and now the classification of lipids uh, lipids have been classified to simple lipids complex lipids uh, and complex lipid, uh, complex lipids uh, sometimes they are referred to as conjugated lipids in uh, some textbooks you can see and the third class is derived lipids and precursors this is actually a miscellaneous group of lipids uh, so uh, we can see the details so simple lipids complex conjugated lipids then derived lipids a group of uh, uh, miscellaneous group of lipids that is now first of all the simple lipids here now, simple lipids are esters of fatty acids with glycerol or other higher alcohols. They include fats, oils and waxes. And uh, the simplest of simple lipid is a triglyceride. A triglyceride. Uh, which will be having a basic alcohol namely glycerol here. CH2, 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 CH2. This is a structure which we are or we should be very familiar with when we study uh, lipids and this uh, glycerol will be having three attached fatty acids in them each of them uh, each, of, each of them attached here attached here and with the loss of a water molecule triglyceride is found and the basic structure of fats and oils are or is triglyceride triglyceride whereas waxes are different waxes have a high molecular weight fatty acids forming esters with a non-glycerol alcohol so the, the difference is that uh, instead, of, instead of the basic alcohol glycerol, it will have uh, some other alcohols which is a bit more complicated in its structure along with the fatty acid which is a high molecular weight or long chain fatty acid. So that forms a simple lipids here and we move to complex lipids. We'll have phospholipids which obviously will have a phosphate, uh, phosphate group attached to it. Glycolipids having a, a monosaccharide or a, an oligosaccharide, oligosaccharide attached to it. Then sulfolipids having sulfur. Then lipoproteins, lipid and protein, and amino lipids and so on. And first of all, we can see phospholipids. Phospholipids will be uh, either glycerophospholipids having a glycerol in it, or sulfophospholipid having a sphingosin, another alcohol. So instead of uh, glycerol, uh, this uh, sul uh, this sphingophospholipids will be having spingenin or sphingosin in them. So this is the structure of sphingosin. And um, glycerophospholipids, uh, out of three carbons of glycerol, two of them 
will be having fatty acids attached to them like here and the third carbon will have a phosphate group phosphate group yes like here a phosphate group with the attached alcohol maybe choline or or uh, serine serine is an uh, oh containing or hydroxyl group containing amino acid attached to here so here mm, this is that and uh, whereas in uh, sphingophospholipids it's a spinginin with attached to fatty acids which is single fatty acid here and then a phosphate group with the uh, uh, connected uh, mostly the alcohol is choline here choline here so that forms phospholipids and we move on to when we move on to glycolipids we have the structure of the basic alcohol sphingosin again here uh, with the, with the uh, glucose or galactose uh, or sometimes uh, uh, an oligosaccharide attached along with the fatty acid also in spinginin and we have got uh, the rest of the uh, molecules here we will study the details as we proceed with the, uh, the, the chemistry of lipids so this is we have discussed simple lipids then uh, complex lipids we will see in detail and derived lipids or precursors they they are uh, there is isoprenoid uh, group which include steroids and terpenes so they have they also uh, they, they basically they have isoprene structures in them so that is why they are included under isoprenoid uh, title now we will see what isoprene or isoprenoids are later then fatty acid fatty acid is actually uh, uh, a precursor of uh, lipids you should say because fatty acids give rise to triglycerides and other fats or lipids then uh, uh, fatty aldehydes ketone bodies lipid soluble vitamins steroid hormones all these are uh, derived lipids but now first of all we have to go to fatty acids uh, the structure of fatty acids as well as classification of fatty acids because uh, without uh, without a thorough knowledge of the structure and classification of fatty acids especially the structure of fatty acids we cannot uh, proceed further uh, with the chemistry of lipids so uh, fatty acids So fatty acids, uh, the basic structural aspects as well as the classification. Um, fatty acids are aliphatic carboxylic acids. That means they are not aromatic, no benzene ring, no cyclic structures uh, usually. Uh, it's a straight chain monocarboxylic acid with CH3 at one end and COH at the other end. As you can see here, this, uh, this particular example given here of a, a fatty acid having 10 carbons in it. So the general formula goes like this CH3 at one end and COH at the other end. So CH3, CH2N times and COOH carboxylic acid group. Now, uh, this number CH2, uh, it can be an even number only. So that, that means uh, all the fatty acids are, all the prominent fatty acids are even numbered. There are, of course, there are odd chain fatty acids also, but <clears throat> most of the time, the metabolic reactions, we, what we uh, see is, even numbered uh, um, fatty acids this is because the fatty acids are are actually formed from synthesized from acetyl coenzyme a which is a two carbon unit a two carbon acetyl unit and uh, this is uh, the the coh group here at one end is it is a pol it is polar as you know it can uh, it can actually ionize also it's a polar end and there is a long non-polar uh, the tail also in the chain uh, with the CH3 at the other end so basically there is a tiny polar section and a very long dominant non-polar section so basically this is an amphipathic molecule it's the same molecule having polar and non-polar ends we call them amphipathic molecules so this is uh, this is about um, fatty acid uh, introduction and now we can see how this is numbered so this is an example for another example given here of uh, uh, fatty acid having six carbons in it and uh, as in uh, as we follow in chemistry the functional group carbon is uh, numbered one carbon number one so here it is carboxylic acid uh, carbon is numbered one from there two three four five and six like that it goes Another type of uh, numbering is uh, uh, starting from the adjacent carbon to the carbonyl carbon, this carbon, this is termed alpha carbon. 
then beta covered and gamma covered. So this is another another type of uh, numbering, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, like that can go. Uh, and still another type of uh, numbering is starting from the C, the methyl group, CH3 end, methyl group or methyl end. So starting from the uh, another uh, type of numbering starts from omega, that is omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, omega 4, omega 5, like that it can go. So these are the numbering systems followed uh, for fatty acids. Now uh, we, we can go to the classification of fatty acids. The basis of classification of fatty acids are, uh, are uh, illustrated here. It can be based on chain length, the number of carbons uh, in the chain, nature of the chain and the nutritional demand also. So based on length of the chain, it can be short chain, medium chain, long chain, uh, like yeah, uh, carbon number or chain and even chain carbon I mean, fatty acids can be the nature of uh, chain it can be saturated fatty acid or unsaturated fatty acid basically and there can be uh, very rarely branched uh, branched fatty acids and hydroxy fatty acids are also there and based on nutritional demands uh, essential and non-essential um, fatty acids are also there so we can see one by one first of all the length of chain the classification based on length of hydrocarbon chain so here it can be short chain which means carbon number is 2 to 6 one of the best example is caproic acid which is having 6 carbons in it and now we uh, we have this uh, medium chain fatty acids uh, which are having 8 to 14 8 to 14 carbon atoms in it so, so obviously there is no uh, 7 uh, we do not include 7 here because it's always even numbered uh, the most important uh, or the most prominent uh, fatty acids which are which uh, which we meet in metabolism or metabolic strips are even numbered fatty acids so there is no 7 uh, 7 here we omit a 7 so 8 14 number 7 now, this is 8 to 14 medium chain for example capric acid having 10 carbons lauric acid having 12 carbons are included in this category and there are long chain fatty acids also which uh, the length of which starts from 16 carbon onwards so uh, uh, normally most of the common uh, fatty acids are having 14 to 24 carbon number or uh, the length of uh, carbon uh, carbon chain is 14 to 24 so another one is depending on the total number of carbon atoms it can be even chain or odd chain as we said as we saw uh, in the previous slide even chain uh, even chain fatty acids dominate and one of the best example is going to be palmitic acid palmitic acid uh, which is having 16 carbons in it uh, obviously it's an even carbon 16 and odd chain uh, example is valeric acid valeric acid uh, which is having pen it's, it's a pentanoic acid uh, valeric acid it's also called pentanoic acid uh, obviously it is having five carbons in it five number of carbons in it so that is uh, an odd chain fatty acid and based on nature of hydrocarbon chain it can be saturated fatty acid or unsaturated fatty acid now, saturated means there is no double bond involved there is no up double bond involved the structure is fully saturated with the hydrogen atoms Whereas unsaturated fatty acids, which means there can be uh, there can be uh, double bonds, one double bond, two double bond, three double bond, uh, and so on. So uh, there will be double bond. So these are, these two are the uh, the prominent uh, under this classification nature of hydrocarbon chains. But but uh, there can be branched. Normally it is straight chain uh, fat chain fatty acids. There can be branched. Uh, uh, chain fatty acids, hydroxy fatty acids, cyclic fatty acids, uh, all of which we have got examples. But here, saturated and unsaturated fatty acids are important in many aspects that we will uh, deal at the end of this section uh, separately. So, in continuation of the block classification based on uh, um, nature of hydrocarbons, uh, we can see some of the rare type of fatty acids also. One of them is branched chain fatty acid. Exemplified by isobutyric acid, 4 carbon, isovaleric acid, a 5 carbon fatty acid. One of the examples here given is the 5 carbon isovaleric acid, which is mostly found in uh, certain bacteria. And also, uh, this is uh, responsible for the characteristic smell of uh, mutton. And the higher the content of this particular fatty acid, 
uh, causes uh, consumers to dislike the smell of uh, lamb meat. Uh, so this is one of them. And uh, hydroxy fatty acids, as you can see, dihydroxy stearic acid, as example is given here, 18 carbon stearic acid. And its derivative is a dihydroxy stearic acid, one of the dihydroxy fatty acids. You can see the OH group here and here, and uh, actually two of them are the, no, and cyclic fatty acids. And these are seen in, uh, these are actually having cyclic structure uh, within the fatty acid. So normally cyclic, uh, it is straight chain only, but there are cer uh, certain fatty acids in which cyclic structure can be seen. Cyclopropane and cyclopropene uh, can be seen. One of the examples is malvalic acid found in uh, cotton seed oil. Uh, certain bacteria like, like, like tobacco are, having, are also having cyclic fatty acids in them. Now we move on to the uh, fourth type of classification based on nutritional requirement. As we know, most of the fatty acids are uh, can be synthesized in our body, whereas there are certain fatty acids which cannot be synthesized. They are included under essential fatty acids. So non-essential fatty acids and essential fatty acids. The, is, uh, the examples for essential fatty acids are linoleic acid and linolenic acid. Both of them are unsaturated fatty acids. And uh, now we go to the nomenclature of uh, um, uh, fatty acids. Uh, fatty acids, uh, IU, IUPAC naming uh, so with the um, uh, with the suffixing oic the term oic is added. So as in the case of saturated fatties, it is anoic, uh, whereas unsaturated fatty acid, it's, it's inoic. Uh, let us see the examples. One of them is octadecanoic acid. So that is anoic acid. It's an 18 carbon, uh, common name stearic acid, one of the most popular uh, fatty acids seen in metabolic steps. And, uh, uns uh, and among unsaturated fatty acids, it's just, the example is octadecanoic acid again 18 carbon but with a single double bond the common name is oleic acid oleic acid so this is the nomenclature yeah, here it is octa decanoic acid octa 8 and deca is 10 so that is 18 and anoic means it's a saturated fatty acid whereas octa deci is octa deci is uh, 8 plus 10 but it's a decinoic means it is unsaturated and uh, now we can uh, we can see the uh, specialities uh, of uh, saturated fatty acids and the unsaturated fatty acids and we can try to draw them also uh, how a saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid differ from each other that can be uh, observed i mean that can be inspected now first of all saturated uh, fatty acids general formula as we saw ch3 ch2 and n times coh it stands more for saturated fatty acids and less for unsaturated fatty acids because they will be having double bond with a lesser number of hydrogens. So this is anoic acid generally. The best examples are palmitic acid 16 carbon and ceric acid 18 carbon, hexadecanoic and octadecanoic acid. The structures are given here. So this can be drawn. Uh, uh, we will try. Uh, so this is palmitic acid COH. Uh, this is having a total of uh, 16 carbons with the COH at one end, CH3 at the other end. Steric acid uh, it is having 18 carbon, again COH at the one end, CH3 at the other end. And what are unsaturated fatty acids? So they have one, two, three or more double bonds in them, uh, exemplified by uh, this uh, oleic acid, linoleic acid and linolenic acid. Now the best examples to to draw as well as to remember, uh, oleic acid is having, no, all of them, all of them, oleic, linoleic and linolenic are having 18 carbons in it with uh, one double bond, two double bonds and three double bonds respectively. So uh, we will uh, uh, we'll see why this is, these are called omega-3, omega-6, omega-9 uh, uh, fatty acids that will be uh, inspected again. Uh, no, these are the structures. Oleic acid is having one double bond here on the from the ninth carbon that is in between ninth and tenth carbon one two three four five six seven eight nine here ninth and tenth carbon whereas linoleic, uh, linoleic acid uh, is having uh, a double bond at uh, between nine and ten 
then 12 and 13 also. Whereas lino linic acid as having three double bonds, one again between 9 and 10 and 12 and 13 and 15 and 16 also. So these, uh, these are unsaturated fatty acids uh, and uh, let us see, let us see whether we can draw these structures. So first of all, uh, the structure of stearic acid, 18 carbon, um, saturated fatty acid. So while drawing uh, fatty acid, uh, saturated fatty acid, we can uh, draw CH3 at one end and a COOH at the other end. Here there will be a CH2, here also uh, a CH2. So in between uh, CH2, how many times? It is 14 times, so that becomes 18 carbon stearic acid, 18 carbon stearic acid. Uh, but while drawing the structure of a uh, uh, unsaturated fatty acid like oleic acid having 18 carbons and one double bond between 9 and 10 carbons, uh, you have to be a bit more careful. Let us start from here. CH3 here and a COOH here. You can draw the whole a number of uh, carbons here, but uh, to make it short and easier, CH2 six times. That makes, makes uh, the seventh carbon here. So this is, uh, I mean, eighth carbon here. Uh, six plus one plus one. This is eighth carbon. Likewise, here also, uh, CH2 uh, six times six times and CH2. So this makes the ninth carbon and this makes the tenth carbon, tenth carbon. So a double bond in between them. A total of 18 carbons, 18 carbon and one double bond, double bond. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, oleic acid. Uh, now we can uh, examine the symbolic representation of uh, the fatty acids. Uh, for example, uh, a saturated fatty acid is represented here, 18 colon 0, which means 18 carbons without a double bond. Whereas uh, uh, here for a leak acid, 18 colon 1 delta 9 uh, as shown here. It means uh, 18 carbon, 1 uh, double bond after uh, ninth carbon. And uh, for example, here again, uh, this is uh, linoleic acid, 18 carbon, uh, 2 double bonds, delta 9 and uh, delta 12 means one uh, double bonded uh, after ninth carbon and another one uh, after twelfth carbon. Eighteen colon three, uh, like this. Yeah, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, this one. Eighteen uh, colon three, delta nine, delta twelve, delta fifteen means three double bonds. Uh, one coming after nine, then twelve, then fifteen, forming linolenic acid. Now, this is a. Uh, uh, a comparison of uh, unsaturated fatty acids, uh, linoleic acid unsaturated with cis double bond and linoleic acid again unsaturated trans double bond. Now unsaturated fatty, acids, unsaturated fatty acids may occur in two distinct structural configurations cis and uh, trans isomers. The cis uh, hydrogen atom attached to the carbon double bond are on the same side like this. The hydrogen is on the same side. Whereas in trans, the hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon double bond are on the different sides like this. So this is the difference between cis and trans a type of uh, unsaturated fatty acids. Now a trans bond creates a straight chain. This is a straight chain whereas uh, the cis bond creates a bend or what is called a kink in the, in the structure. Naturally occurring unsaturated fatty acids are mostly the cis form and is considered to be healthy. Cis is considered as healthy since they contribute to the formation of good cholesterol. And the geometry of double bond is almost always a, a, a cis configuration in natural fatty acids. Uh, natural fatty acids. And uh, they do not stack well because of this bent shape. They do not stack very well. Uh, the intermolecular interactions are much weaker than saturated molecules in unsaturated linoleic acid. For example, with the cis uh, having cis double bond. Now, as a result, the melting point are much lower than unsaturated fatty acids and also this add to the fluidity of the unsaturated, naturally occurring unsaturated fatty acids like the naturally occurring linoleic acid, unsaturated fatty acid. Now cis fats are typical forms of unsaturated food uh, fat found in nature while trans fats are made through hydrogenation. So uh, trans fats have more uh, similar shape to the, un, uh, to the saturated fatty acids or saturated fats also. Um, and um, trans fats, 
the unsaturated fats uh, can be either cis or trans fats while cis fats are beneficial and promote uh, good cholesterol trans fats are considered harmful to uh, cardiovascular health especially those trans fats which come from unnatural sources so this is the difference between the structure as well as the uh, health uh, aspects of uh, you know, for example unsaturated fatty acids given here linoleic acid as uh, unsaturated cis double bond and uh, linoleic acid with trans double bond another health aspect uh, to be mentioned or specified here is that of uh, mufa and uh, the, the monounsaturated fatty acids and polyunsaturated fatty acids as you can see the examples uh, there the MOFA has one double bond uh, uh, whereas PUFA has two or more double bonds and uh, MUFA is considered to be uh, comparatively better as far as health aspects are concerned uh, when they are part of uh, fats and uh, still another one is the omega-3 family here an omega-3 family uh, uh, omega-3 fatty acids can improve your cardiovascular uh, health, lower blood pressure and reduce triglycerides and linolenic acid here as uh, one example for omega-3 uh, um, fatty acid and uh, it is based on the position of the double bond uh, when the omega when the double bond comes uh, after omega-3 uh, carbon it belongs to omega-3 family likewise omega-6 and omega-9 fatty acids are also there but a prolonged usage of any of the fatty acids or fats is not good when you use fats or fatty acids it's better to use this and uh, even uh, 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 prolonged use of omega-3 can reduce your immune system function because it lowers body's inflammatory response so this is uh, about fatty acids uh, thank you